Hello everyone, my name is Paul Callahan from the Ulster GA and I will be facilitating this evening's live event. I would just like to welcome everyone to the Ulster GA webinar, Fitness with the Ball through Games and Game Related Drills with Tony Scullion. Before we start, can I remind participants that the session has been recorded? Tony's presentation has quite a number of videos and animated clips, so if you have any difficulty viewing the presentation, maybe due to a weak internet signal in your home or any technical issues, the presentation will be available on the Ulster GA YouTube channel in the next few days. Tony would like you to have a notepad and pen available to take notes during this presentation if possible. We have received a large number of questions already. We will try and answer some of them at the end of the presentation and if anyone has any questions or comments during the session, please use the chat box. I will now introduce my colleague and presenter for this evening's webinar, Tony Scullion. Tony has been the Football Development Officer for OCG for the past 17 years. He represented his club Ball on the Screen and Derry at both football and hurling for many years. He won the All-Ireland Senior Football Championship with Derry in 1993, as well as winning three National League titles, capping his county to success in 1995 final over Donegal. And as a Donegal man myself, he keeps reminding me of that victory. He represented Ulster for 10 years and has won six Railway Cup medals in a row while captain of the provincial team in 1991. He represented Ireland in two international rules series against Australia in 1987 and 1990. He also won four All-Star Awards during his excellent career. So I'll now hand you over to Tony to begin this presentation. Hello everyone. That's me now, I think. Um, thanks for Paul for introducing, getting the thing going here. Um, a nice, a very nice evening it is here up in Derry. Um, I'm sure it's the same across the whole country. And in fact, I think this one's joined us from all over the world this, this evening. So hopefully you'll enjoy the session. Um, it's, 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 as Paul said, it's fitness with, with the ball through games and game related drills, one to 12 to senior. Um, these games and uh, activities can be used for hurling camogie. And I realize there's a number of hurling and camogie co coaches um, on board here this evening. So hopefully during the presentation, I uh, remember to, to tell you what's the difference. You'll know yourselves and I'm sure for hurling and camogie, some of the, the plain area will be, be larger and um, example, things like that there. A um, couple of games that I have, I have them on video and I also have them in that minute form. Hope, I'm hoping everything's going well from my end here. So please God, Everything will go in, will go well uh, from your end also. Um, as I said, maybe I, uh, that I'm usually I'd, I'd be much happier out in the field this evening than even like this here doing a heat a coaching course like this here. But as I say, this is the first webinar I have delivered. It's new to me. It's a few years working in the council, and we this is the stuff I know. There's been a lot of webinars been de delivered across the country the last few weeks, and I've been on a few of them, and they've been great. So hopefully you'll pick up a few ideas. So let's go. Right, the first question I ask, is good coaching necessary? Is it necessary, good coaching? And I'm going to play this wee video here, and you, you might see this wee boy, it's a wee squirrel, and you know this, uh, he didn't need a lot of coaching, a wee sports drink done him. So have we look at this to see what you think of this. Hey, science good, science good. So, look, a wee sports drink is, might do the job, you know, might be just as simple as that. But we all know it's not just as simple as that. That wee boy is very handy with a knot. Whatever, this is my, balance screen is my club. Um, and uh, I started myself as a player at on the 14 level um, with the club balance screen. And I'm going to circle this man to the right, uh, Seamus. And I have um, talked on different occasions about this man, what he meant to me. And uh, unfortunately, he died a young man 
but I lived four miles from Dean Midlinchy Park. Some of you might know Dean Midlinchy Park. It was the county grounds in Derry for a long number of years to the Dun Dunup Celtic Park. And I was way out, lived out way out in the country, and as I say, it was four miles. My ma and dad never drove when that with no car. We, we were reared in a small farm. All we had was a Dexter tractor and a few bicycles, but uh, they weren't going to allow me to go four miles on the, on a bike to Bannis Green on the 14th and the 12 years age. But this man here to, to, your, to your right, Seamus, come looking for my older brother. And this is three coaches. I tortured him that much. I tormented him that much and cried and cried that he says, right, jump on there somewhere. And Seamus was a type of man. He had, I guarantee he had nine or ten of the players. He lifted all the country lads and took them to the pitch. The town lads would have walked up the pitch, but he left with all the country lads. We'd done our session, and then on our way home, what had Seamus done? He had stopped at the shop and bought us all sweets. I will never forget him. He, to me, he, he meant so much and gave me that. He smit me of, of the games, of the Gillick games, and he just was just a great man. By the way, before I move on, does any of can suss me out in the photograph? First one that texts us into Paul there. Uh, use your text box, coach, coaches. Where do you think am I at in that photograph? <laughs> I wonder what any of get me. I'll give you five seconds. I wonder if any of suss me out. There we are. That's me. It wasn't too big. And I was, only, I was only making up the numbers in that team. Yes, I was getting a position on the field on that team, believe it or not, a cornerback. And as I said, Seamus maybe thought at 12 years of age, it's still another year or two from the 14. And as they come from my brother, but I went. And as I say, Seamus could have picked the bigger lads and the older lads, but he put me on cornerback in that team. And that's what started that for me. So uh, great times. Lessons learned, coaches. Lessons learned. And I've played on the on the some great coaches uh, in my time so as I say starting off with Seamus and even my my primary schools coach teacher who was very good too but the things that I learned about co my coaches I I'm just going to put them down here I put them down in a few words the ones that, that I really would think so much of um, and the first one the first word I come up with is respect um, we had all respect for Seamus. Any man, coach that I played underneath that was that give me respect, I would give that I would give that manager and coach a respect. And respect is a, a very very important. You have to people say you have to earn respect as a coach. Well, you know, all, everybody's volunteers. You're going out to your club. Yes, it might be a hard statement, but it's reality. You know, you have to, I know you might, you might think uh, I'm giving up my free time, but you want to earn your respect with the group you're working with. And if you do that, coaches, I'm telling you, you're a winner. Number two, well, you'll, have, you'll get respect if you treat all players fairly. Number three, enjoyment. No matter where you go, no matter uh, what age level or what level you're playing at, it has to be fun nowadays or the kids will have all the things to do, uh, more so than 40 years ago. They can play in, they stay in their own house and play the PlayStation or whatever, or go to other sports. So content, very important. That the content, if you have the right, if you have the right content coaches, then it will be really enjoyable for the, for the players. And again, as I say, organized is so important. Setting goals, setting realistic goals, not setting goals to start the year, that you're going to win the championship maybe you're not in the top six or not even the top four to win the championship maybe it's about winning a couple of games in in your section maybe it's about holding a, a far a team that you know is better than you to six points so set realistic goals and everything hinges in that last word coming up there coaches delivery that's how you deliver on the on the coaching field you know you have to have that what is it? You have to be enthusiastic. You have to have energy. Do you call it passion? Do you call it on your bouncing? But you have to be, the players 
have to feel that God, you're really in this with them. And I tell you, in most cases, in fact, all cases, they'll do their very, very best for you. Right. I'm sure there's a wee, you know, a wee program and it's called Catchphrase. And that's, forget about that footer to the left, coaches. I'm going to throw up now two photographs very quickly here. And I want you to say, get the catchphrase. See or say what you see and see who's, who's into Paul with the right answer. So just say what you see in these two slides. And it's a very popular phrase now in modern day coaching. And it's very, very important. So I'm sure I'll give you another one in seconds. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. There's the answer. Spotting and fixing. Being able to spot and fix. It's not, it's not rocket science coaches. It's with being able to take a, a child or a player out, a wee girl or wee boy, whatever the case would be, and just learning them that if they're doing something wrong, for example, if they're doing the pickup wrong, if they're holding the hurling stick wrong, if they're, they're doing the, the jab lift wrong, if they're kicking the ball wrong, if they're doing the toe tap, that you can take them out and show them the correct, correct way of doing it. Maybe we better one on one with that player, put them back in, but I wouldn't be taking out the same player all the time. I wouldn't be trying to, you know, would it maybe embarrass a young player like that there, but just nice and quietly spotting and fixing. And then, of course, spotting and fixing when you're playing games because in your coaching sessions it is all about games i made a call the session tonight i used the word word drills i don't like that word even though i did use it in the uh, as naming it as, as part of the title activity activity is a better word uh, game game activities that which might make me just games but it'll be game related drills as such but it's hard to beat the game, as I say, and you have to be able to, to spot and fix and talk uh, children or adults, players through the game. With a, a, maybe it's a system, maybe it's something that you expect an individual to play, but spotting and fixing is so important. Okay, I'm wondering, you, I'm sure you wanted to say what's all these lines, Tony. I was working on that. I'm not the IT expert or top high in technology, but we'll play this clip. This is one of my favorite games. Um, circle score, and uh, we put this. We put, the animated stuff that you see the night coaches will maybe put together about ten years ago. Uh, this stuff here, a few years ago, we were down in uh, Abbottstown in the in the GH uh, training centre, and we've uh, done a wee bit of videos for our coaching courses. Now we weren't spotting and fixing. Uh, you'll see yourself during these videos tonight. This, a lot, uh, there's a lot of stuff going wrong on them, but I think it's no harm that too because it's good when you're going through coaching courses or delivering coaching courses to coaches who can spot their mistakes. So I'm going to play this first. Uh, hopefully, as Paul said, you have your pen and paper. Yes, this presentation will be sent out, but if you're like me, coaches, I always loved everything on paper. I was an, I'm an old timer. I would be a my wife is afraid to throw me out of maybe four or five drawerfuls of wee books about here. I have one line about there, and I don't know. And it's just a, I write down every session uh, that I do. Every session I would always prepare the night before. So what I'm saying to you this evening here, maybe put it down in your own words. Circle score. So here, here we go. Now I'm going to stop it. What do you see here? You see a mobile goal sitting in the center of the field you see an orange line across the field here hold on you see an orange line of markers across the field a dividing line there's a dividing line there an orange line of markers and then you see yellow markers right around the goals like around just a circle right around the goals and you throw the ball up to start, but I'll explain these three lines first of all. This short one here, this wee small semicircle, would be roughly the size you'd do with your under 14 girls in football. Maybe a wee bit bigger for under 14 boys. That middle circle, when you look at it, that's roughly the size you'd make it for the seniors. And when I say the size, you're wondering what size is that. Um, 
for seniors, you'll be talking about 20 steps out from the goals like this here, out to this point, and then 25, um, 25 steps out to the center of the point of the, of the semicircle, out there. So 25 steps out to here, and then you draw your circle right round like a half moon till, till 15 steps or 20 steps out from the far post. That would be for senior footballers. The, the bigger circle would be for holders. You make your circle bigger. Again, you can step, step it further out and take it away further out down the field for the hurling team. But as I say, for senior footballers, about 20 steps out from each post and then out to the point of 25 steps. When I say steps, just step it out by 25 steps. So that's roughly uh, the, the size of the semicircle you do for minor or senior footballers. And as I say, the smaller, the smaller one would be for on the 14s girls and so on. I just want to try to cater for all codes here. So we're going to play this now. Uh, hopefully it'll play all right, hopefully. So the game continues there. So you see it, boys on the other side, they have to, you have to shoot from outside the circle. I'll maybe put away, uh, I'll maybe put away this line here, coaches. Uh, sorry about this. I'm, I, I'm magic, you know, I could, never thought I could do this. So um, we'll play it now here again. Sorry. Right, that's the game. Game continues, the game never stops. The only time the game stops is, is for a free kick. And there's two teams, the two, the yellows are playing with each other, either side of the goals, that's a great catch. And the black jerseys are playing with each other, each side of the goals. You count the points, only points count. Uh, goals, there's no goals in this game. So it's just points. And you have to score the point from outside the half circle on your side. You can compete for the ball inside the half circle, but you have to score from outside it. If the ball goes over the bar, you count the point. If not, if it goes wide, the game still continues. The game never stops. You can play for a certain length of time, five minutes, or you can play up to five points. <clears throat> There's a wee bit of video work done here from the ground also, coaches. Hopefully you'll see. Remember, you can pass the ball across the line with your foot. There's a lad who won the ball across the far side, and he passed it to one of his teammates on this side. So the yellows are playing with the yellows and the black shorts are playing with the black shorts. We'll just play it. It's, it's a rolling, it's a rolling uh, video here, coaches, so it's back on again. Hopefully you have caught on what I'm on about. Dividing line, semi-circle, making the right size for football or hurling or kamogi. Same on the far side of the field. <coughs> Game continues. You compete for the ball, but you have to work the ball outside the circle before you can score. If you score from inside, the score doesn't count. So... Uh, Brilliant, you have everything in that game. Catching, breaking ball, blocking, and of course, you can do all the practice for shooting without any pressure on, but there's nothing like match day pressure. And that there, that's as close as you'll get to match day pressure. There's always pressure on the, on the player going for the point. It's a brilliant, brilliant game, coaches. As I say, I have the dividing line. Um, I think the space that them playing in each side of the line. Um, I know on a couple of occasions, uh, I've taken away the line and let them play right around the goals, but I think it's better with a dividing line. So hopefully uh, you have understood this game. So we'll move on. And that's it in animated form, coaches. Just in case the video didn't play for you, that's the animated form of there. Same thing. And the, si the sizes that I was told you, ignore any other sizes, ignore the 30 meters there or whatever. I was working on steps with you there, uh, taking steps out, and I've given you the size of what the size would be for on the age and for senior and for hurling and camogie. So that's the game there. Everybody's in, can go inside the circle, but you have to work the ball outside. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant game. Okay, we'll move on to the next one. Who attacks the fans? Just watch it. Just watch it play. Another great game. The ball starts from a 50-50 ball from the, from the goalkeeper and a kick out. <clears throat> the team that wins the ball have to work that. La the, black, the black jersey didn't realise and they, didn't, they weren't picking up the instructions to start. But they have to work the ball out past the line, which was the line on the 65-yard line. 
And now they work the ball in for a score. When they work the ball out, the ball's allowed to score. If the yellows turn this ball over, they have to go out before they come back in to go for the score. Points and goals. Great game. You're coming up against um, blanket defences in this game. It really uh, conditions you to play. That's This ball hit the post now. So <clears throat> the yellows got it, so they have to go out before they come. If the black jerseys had got that ball come off the post, they could have still went for the score. But the yellows have got possession. Now they're going out to the to the to the to the 65, and here they come back in again. Balls give away, so the black jerseys have to go out now. They've worked, so they're back out past the line, and now they give it. Great game, high intensity, great ball by this lad, and the event got a score. Um, and over the bar. Uh, so um, I'll just I'll just uh, for Hurling uh, for Hurling or for um, Komogi or on the four teams Hurling you can take the line out for this according to many players you have we're only playing 7v7 there there's only 14 lads involved I took the line out to 65 and I think <coughs> it still worked alright you could have took it out between the 45 and 65 but especially now with the new rules in Gaelic football and the ball been kicked out from the 21. Uh, there's one thing, coaches, I did not explain in that game, and uh, I, I'll explain it before I go. When the team in possession scores, the goalkeeper will reward them on the next kick out to try to keep possession, to retain the kick out. The, the goalkeeper will be looking for the team that scores. If the ball goes wide, coaches, the goalkeeper will look for the opposition in the kick out. And if the ball drops short into the goalie's hands, then he'll give it to the opposition either by hand or by foot, and they work the ball out. So it's brilliant work for the goalkeepers too. The goalkeeper, other than the first kick out, when it was a 50-50, the goalkeeper has always somebody to aim for on every kick out. So it's brilliant for restarts, which is so important in Gaelic football, and get players to move for kick outs. So I think that's it. And there's the game again in animated form, just in, and just in case it didn't play for you in video. Same game, as I say, you decide where the line's at, if it's for hurling, it'll be further out the field. For on the age, the line might be a bit closer. <clears throat> it'll be no closer than the 45, I would say, 45, 65, even for any age level. Because, as I say, the kickouts has to come from the 21 now. So you can put the line, if you have 24 or 26, even a Gaelic football thing, thin, you can put the line maybe even to the far 65. So that's it in animated form. So we're moving on to the next game. Um, pay, pay the price. I have the lines drawn, coaches, already, which is, again, it's something similar to the game I showed earlier on there, um, the circle score one. Again, pay the price. <coughs> this game is for, for teams, the defending team to improve on their tackling inside the scoring zone. How many games are lost by all discipline in the tackle? So this game here should condition your players not, hopefully not to foul in the scoring area. Again, that small circle that I have drawn is uh, for maybe just on the 14 girls, maybe a wee bit bigger for boys. And um, for all the 14 girls, you would do 20, 20 steps. I'll just put it out here, coaches. 20 steps out from the, this post and leave down your marker. 20 steps out to this post and leave down your marker. And then you'll just go beyond the 21 and put and draw your, your uh, half moon with wee markers placed down every 10 steps or whatever the case would be. And can I say, coaches, when you're using these wee markers, use the wee flexible ones that go straight onto the ground when you tramp on them. Uh, don't be using hard, hard plastic because a player could break their ankle very hard. It's just the wee soft plastic markers that tramp onto the ground that if a player tramps on them, it'll do no harm. So I say that first semicircle can be used for maybe on the 14 gears or whatever. The boys might go a bit further out. The second line there is roughly, I would say, for minors and seniors. Uh, I'm saying 
for seniors with 35 steps out from the post out and place down your marker likewise in this side 35 steps out and then you go just just draw your line till a point of it the point of your semicircle will be roughly a step or two beyond the 45 and then just fill your semicircle in with a wee marker every 10 steps whatever and then that last one is right out to close to the sideline for the hurling and right across way across the 65 because um, if you go away a free in hurling in that area at all even beyond the 65 now it's a point it's a nearly a definite point so what i'm saying is make sure your semicircle if you're playing this in hurling you're playing it uh, just around the 65 or a little beyond it and then you do the same of course at the opposite end of the field your three your three uh, your one circle if it's you're playing you're on the 14 so it's senior football you're doing you know, you know the size of circle and for hurlers as i say if it's a senior hurling team then you have to go, go beyond the 65 whatever so you just draw your with markers and you play the game pay the price and i didn't ex i don't think i have explained the scoring system if you, you score outside say we're looking at senior football here or minor football this circle here if you score outside and you kick a point they'll get their normal point for it if you get inside the semicircle and the score a point from play they get two for it but if they're fouled inside this area and the score the result in free they get three points for it and your goal is just as normal three points but you're punishing the defending team for fouling inside the scoring zone and if you do that in Sinan and you're full of energy and you're encouraging the lads and girls and keeping the score no matter what you want to do uh, no matter what you do or if it's a game of marbles people who play sport like to win and your players like to win on Sinan you're, you're on the 14s your 12s your seniors everybody likes to win when you play a game so it'll this it'll encourage them to stop fouling within this scoring zone I think it's a great wee game to cut down stupid freeze inside the scoring zone. Very, hopefully I understand. Unfortunately, I can't uh, connect any units or so I don't know. Hopefully, units are understanding what I'm doing here, coaches. So we're moving on to the next game here. Sorry, that's that's it. Playing that's the same game playing without the the circles, without the semicircles. Same game there, pay the price. He scored from inside that he or he's outside. So we're going on now. Now I'm going to show you ins, um, a few um, hand passing um, actions here um, in a match between Dublin and Mayo um, recently. And I want you to um, look at people think the hand pass is nice and simple and it's easy to handle, but what makes a good hand pass coaches it still has to be practiced and thinning what makes a good hand pass it's the height of it it's the direction and it's the weight of it that's the very important ingredients in a good hand pass so just want to watch this game here there's some backdoor passes and some forward passes there's some lateral passes with the hand and uh, we see now see can i get a wee bit of volume for you and we'll play it hopefully it'll play for you coaches in the opening two minutes it might look simple, but it's a difference of one and losing, getting all them wee hand passes to his target. The right weight, the right height, the right direction. A good hand pass could cut a whole blanket defence out with the ball. There's one there, played over top. He did, could have kicked his own point. Another wee hand pass here, slip by Aiden. Brilliant. Right. How important it is the hand pass or the fist pass. I like the hand pass because it's a softer pass and you're hitting the ball with the fingers. And uh, it's a bigger target to hit the ball with a closed fist. Sometimes, sometimes if it goes off the side of it, it'll not get to its intended target. But you just decide. This is bad practice, coaches. I'm sure you will all agree with me that we don't do that anymore. 
I wore the t-shirt too. We all done it. Five players in each line. That we player at the back, we Johnny or we Mary. So by the time they get a touch, they'll be fed up. They'll be how could they keep their head at all, or how could they keep focused? So it's small. When you're doing drills like this here, it's three v two or two v two, whatever the case. Two v one might be face one might be a wee bit too intense. But as I say, uh, I'm. Don't do it in long, long straight drills like that there. And that there's okay, 3v2 or 2v2 maybe in warm-ups or with on the 12s or 14s. But it's not maybe the common practice all the time with 16s and minors. As I say, I wore the t-shirt and you know, uh, I do see this happening in, in coaching sessions. It's, I don't think it's maybe just 100% correct. You can, it's, you can make it more game-related than that there. So I'm going to show you a couple of drills here that I feel are more game-related. So we'll just move on here. Right, I've lines drawn here again, coaches, and I wanted to draw these lines to save. And I want to give you measurements here because I know at the finish of the session tonight, you have been asking me, what's the measurements, Tony? So this is a wee hand fist pass. Um, across here, it's roughly about five or six steps from, from cone to cone, from group to group. Forward here, from here, to here is 15 steps. From this marker to the next mark to the next man is 15 steps. And then it's 15 to the very end. So it's 45 steps in total, which is over 40 meters. Um, I have them here in this we animated form in twos here. Two, 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 and two. And you know this this is intense enough. If you if you only had one on one up there, it's be maybe too intense, but that's intense enough. They're going uh pretty often enough that they're, they're getting a they're, they are getting a wee break every other time, but they have to go maybe three and then five and three and five, whatever the case may be. Yes, you could have two and one, but it becomes very intense. And intensity, when, when you go into the season, yes, you'll want short and sharp stuff. Yes, there's no harm, but don't do it for a long period of time. So I just want you to watch the, the game here or the, or the activity. The lines have gone away, thanks be to God. I don't know, know how you've done that, coaches, but that's great. But anyway, it's short clips here, so it's playing over and over a few times. It's, on a, it's a continuous reel, coaches, so don't pass your remarks on that. Just want to make a point here, coaches. See the receiver. He's got to be, he or she's got to be in close to receive the ball. They're a wee bit far out there, the receiver, because the more distance between the passer and the receiver, the better chance of that ball or slipper being into uh, intercepted. And again, you can do this drill with Hurling. You can do, you can lengthen out a wee bit and uh, bring in short stick work with Hurling or Komogi, or you can do the hand pass, which is becoming very popular in Hurling and Komogi now too, the hand pass. So again, remember the receiver should be coming in to about two steps of the, the for example, coming in there to receive the ball, not, not going very wide, because the closer you take the ball, don't be kicking it right beside him, because the player on the ball could maybe even hand the ball to you or throw it to you, so it has to be a wee bit of space. So that's a great, that's 40 metres plus 45 steps, high intensity running, stuff that you do in the match. That's better than that straight line drill. So that's high intensity stuff, a lot of heavy running out there at speed. Now you're, you're saying to yourself, what do you do, these boys or girls in the middle? Who could you use in the middle here to do the the stanton in the middle. Goalkeepers. Brilliant for goalkeepers, for handling. They, they don't have to do all this running up and down. They could, they could be brilliant. Injured players, they could do it. If you have extra coaches there, they could do it. And at the last resort, if you need a couple of players to stand in the middle, yes, but change them every minute or so or whatever, 45 seconds. Just let them out again uh, very quickly. Don't have them in. But you can use goalkeepers, as I say, coaches is worth your injured players. Okay, uh, hopefully, hopefully you are happy enough with that, coaches. Hold on, Ty. Move on. Um, right, the next one. Three-man move or three-girl move, again, can be done for Hurling, can be done for Komogi. Uh, um, I maybe didn't say in the last one there, coaches. I talked about 15 steps for adults and minors. Maybe in that last one there for under 14 uh, footballers, maybe 12 steps. 
remember what I talked about 15? It's just 12 would do for on the 14s and maybe for girls, maybe a wee bit shorter, 10 or 12, whatever the case would be. But you know yourself. Here again, it's five meters between this cone and this cone. And then another five meters between this cone and this cone at the end. Then it's 15 meters, or 15 um, steps. Again, working on steps, coaches, sorry. 15 steps to the middle, another 15 steps, and then another 15 steps to the end. Again, as I say, five steps between each of these uh, players at the end. So we'll just let it play. Give, kick back, give, give, slip, and then the middle man gets to the end. And the next, there'll be no hesitation. Hasn't they are stopping like uh, the wee animated man there? It'll be flat out, flat out of pace. So, do you see the way it's working, coaches? It's middleman gives, takes it back again, slips it left or right, gives it down to the next one, and then this man times his run to give to the next one. So, it's all about timing the run at pace, everything at pace, coming off the shoulder one or two steps, a uh, couple of steps from the man that's giving the ball. So it's a one, two to start, and then you slip either left or right. Uh, just gonna stop it a wee second. Can I say a wee thing here, coaches? When you're doing that there, don't be saying the one, two at the start, and you have to go right. You know, in a match situation, they can go, there's no decisions. They have to make the decision themselves. So they'll decide is the left player the best or the right player. But if it goes to the left, it has to go to the right for the last move down here. So it's a three-player move. Three, but the player who gets it there decides either to go left or right. What's the best uh, pass for him? Make him make his own decision. And one other thing, see these players at the end, as well as, as I talked about changing those players in the middle, unless they're goalkeepers or injured players, these players then, every run you make, every length you run from one end to the other, while you're resting, change your positions. The middle man goes out there and vice versa. So everybody changes the positions every time you're resting. So a new middle man coming up there the next time. So hopefully you can understand that. Um, so great, happy enough for that. Hopefully I can't talk to you. So hopefully you can understand it. Um, maybe at the finish up, if you have any questions, you can ask me. This one here, uh, who's attacking, defending, another absolutely brilliant, uh, it's not a game, it's an activity. Um, just forget about that 40 meters there, coaches. We see, hold on. Now. Just forget about that 40, that 40 meters. That can be 45 for senior and minor players. So take this down. I would say you get away with, out to the 45 yard line and one of the main goals. So you could set a play from one main goal and have a mobile goal in the 45 line, five yard line. For hurling, this line here can be a bit further. Um, so um, how do you play the game? Before I play the wee clip here, these three players tick off. These three yellow players at the far end should be out to meet them before they tick off. Before you blow the whistle or shout to go, they should be out here to start. When you blow the whistle, it becomes a three on three. The three players on the ball have to go for the goal. Not a point. They have to go for a goal. And remember, make your goals. There. So if you're using training poles, make sure they're seven or eight steps like normal Gillick goals. Or if you're using the Gillick Grand, and the mobile goal would do ground out there. But as I say, these three attack, three yellows defend. After the three reds attack, whether they score, whether the ball is intercepted, or whether the ball goes wide, they stay in, the three yellows step out, at the end they defend it. So the yellows will always step out at that end, and the next three yellows come in from that end, and the three reds that attacked defend the next move. And whenever they defend the next move, if they turn the ball over, you shout, uh, next next group and allow three seconds for the next group before you allow the next group to go. So after you attack, you defend the next move. That's what it's called here. So some players tune off or switch off after the attack or after they lose the ball or after they score a goal. They just switch off and all of a sudden the, net, the opposition have the kick out ticking. So this is making teams to tune in to the next ball right away. So just watch. So these three reds will attack. These three yellows should be out here to start coaches to tackle them and the game commences. When the ball is turned over or scored or wide, the three yellows step out because after you attack, you defend the next move and then you step out. So after you defend, you step out 
But after you attack, you have to stay in for the next move, and then you, you step out after the next move. So I'm going to play it here. Here we go. Hopefully you understand me here. It's short clips again, so it's repeating itself. So don't... Three reds in, they go for the goal. And then three... There's a starting again. Three reds attacking. They stay in for the next three coming. Then three yellows after the attack. They stay in for the next three coming, and so on. Very, very intense. How, can, how many can you do that with? As I say, 45 metres for, for, um, for, for football, for minors, and you could do... On the 14s, maybe 40 to 45. For hurling, you could do a bit longer. And you might have seen me at uh, earlier on there. Sorry. You might have seen me there with a semicircle for hurling. So, um, you, as I say, you're going for goals. So, I don't want hurlers to be shooting from as soon as they get the ball. Make the goals maybe even smaller, or maybe a wee semicircle have to get inside before the shoot. So, it makes them uh, uh, come into contact. To try to slip a couple of hand passes for the score or hurling. So hopefully you were happy enough with that. Uh, we're moving on to the next one. Uh, hand pass and fist passing game. I love this game. You can for for football, you can play it across the field. Uh, you might see me with a wee bit of red. Uh, uh, that's there was six. I'm saying to you could play it from the 14 yard line. Again, start with a line sideline in the 14 yard line. Uh, if it's marked out well, you don't need markers, and then play it up to the far 65. So you'll have roughly about 19 steps between, between that and setting up your rectangle, and 19 steps on the other side. Your rectangle, this is the key, your rectangle is 30 this way by 10. Make the rectangle big, and when you're making, when you're drawing out the rectangle, you might see me with these wee Mark it clearly with red markers. Don't put just one in each corner because the players will not know where they're going. They'll not see the rectangle. So mark it out clearly with a number. Have three along the sides and along the long side have four. So it's 30 by 10. And likewise up there, 30 by 10. And you throw the ball up to start. Uh, no kicking, just all hand passing. You're allowed, you can, put on, you're, you can allow them to solo. You can allow them with... Maybe one solo or two solo or solo as much as you want. You decide. You may only let one toe tap on it. Whatever you decide, uh, what you think the game, and let them play. How do they score? If the Blues are playing that way, they have to work the ball inside the rectangle, but they can't run inside the rectangle. They have to play the ball from outside to inside the rectangle with the hand. As I said to you, it's all hand passing or fist passing, and anybody can come inside the rectangle. That's the reason it's made big for I sometimes, and I've wore the t-shirt myself, where they made really small squares and it was impossible to get a ball inside it because the defending team was all standing inside it. But they will not be able to defend a 30 by 10 rectangle. So they'll have to come out and take my player to player. And as I say, anybody can go inside the rectangle. So it's a matter of you getting the ball up here and somebody making a run, if they're even inside it, to come and take the ball or come in with a lit run to tell it. See, when they get the ball inside the rectangle, you turn and you attack the other rectangle. So you don't give the ball back. So you can go back and forward two or three times without losing the ball. But if the team turns it over, then they have to uh, act. So we'll just play it here, coaches. Hopefully you'll understand it. Here you see the Reds attacking. Now, unfortunately, there's only two players going inside the rectangle. But remember I said anybody can get inside the rectangle. Score gotten. So they're going to attack the other way, the Reds. Heading up the other way again, uh, and they've got a they've got a score again. Now they're coming again. Blues have turned them over, so the Blues are going back this way, and they have scored, and they attack down the other way. And remember, as I said, coaches, anybody, all players can go inside this rectangle. It's about the, it's about getting time in your run or being in there and making a wee move to get the pass. But the pass has to be from the outside to the inside. You can't run inside the rectangle and get a score. If you do, and you have the ball and you run in, you have to come back out again and pass the ball inside. All hand passing, as I said to you, you can have them sole on the ball, you decide. And for hurling, again, you could turn it and play it up the field and play it longer and use short stick work or whatever, or camogie. It might be all right over the field for under 14 boys. If you have enough boys, I'm sure you could play it the full length of the field, no bother. So that game is called hand passing, fist passing game. Hopefully I've explained it well enough. Remember, 30 
by 10. That's the key. Don't make your squares or rectangles very small or they'll not understand it. Okay, and remember after you score, you, you retain possession, you play on. And again, as a coach, you keep the scores. You make sure you're keeping the scores because the players will want you. If you're not keeping the scores, then the session will be dead. The players will not be interested. P players want to win everything they take part in. Okay, so we're going to watch kick passing here now. Well, I'm just looking at the time where the quarter, after the quarter pass yet, so we'll hopefully finish in 15 minutes and a few minutes to, to ask questions. So kick passing, another very important skill in Gaelic football. Um, I just want you to watch uh, this wee video here again. It's, 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 it's uh, Dublin and Mayo. And all these kicks, I think, oh, sorry. Sorry, what did I do wrong? Oh, 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 oh. Oh, 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 how do I get back in again? Oh, sorry. Hold on, Iman. Hold on, Iman, hold on. Oh, is it up back up again? Hopefully. So, uh, I want you to watch the kick pass here. And all these kicks uh, was the... Uh, all these kicks are with the uh, the hard fuck, the pump pass. I'm going to try to get volume for you here, coaches. Hopefully, I might get volume. All these kicks now. I don't want it to go too loud. Are are pump passes through the laces? Just watch them. As you see, they're all pump passes with the laces, through the laces. The pump pass across. Through the laces. Okay, now I want you to watch this other kick pass. See, uh, it's Dublin and Mayo again. And this is what you call the instep, the softer pass with the instep of the boot, the inside, the instep of the boot, the inside of the boot. Just watch this. Hopefully I'll be fit to play the volume. I never thought I'd have the technology as well off. Hey coaches, God save us. Don't talk to me, I'd rather be out in the field with a pair of wellies on me. But anyway, let's go for this. End step, coaches. Softer pass. End step. All these kicks is Then step, then say the bit, softer pass. Soft pass. <clears throat> Soft pass to the end step. Now this one here from Kane O'Sullivan, uh, you could maybe argue, it went a wee bit high too. You're doing well, the end step, the end step. A hook kick. Okay, what am I saying, coaches? Ah, well, this is a wee bit of stats that were taken from the 09 final compared to the 016 final. Um, Kerry played Cork in the 09 final. And um, there was 151, you see, I have it on the line with the red marking here. There was 151 kick passes in the game, 55% success rate. That was in 2009, which was 11 years ago. 2016 All-Ireland final replay between Dublin and Mayo. There was 110 attempted kick passes compared to 151 
uh, seven years earlier. Yes, you see the breakdown there, 84, 12 punt, and 14 with the outside of the boot. But this is the most uh, possibly interesting slide. Of the 2016 all Ireland final replay, of the 84 inside of the boot, there were 70 of them successful, as you see. 14 not successful. Outside of the boot, there was eight wasn't successful, only six was. And there was only 12 punts in the 2016 one, but there was 11 successful. Uh, so there were teams weren't going for the punt unless they were very, very sure of it, more so than, <clears throat> than what happened in 2009. And the most important stat here, coaches, look to the right of the screen, successful. 79% of all kick passes were successful in 2016. And in 2009, we talked about there two slides earlier, 55% of kick passes were successful. Now you're going to say, Tony, oh, that's less kicking the game. Yes, we all sort of know that. That's destroying the game. Is it? It is. We can argue about it. Well, I'm not so sure about that. Is it, is it cutting down the scores? It's not. 2009, Kerry 16 points, Cork 1-9. A total of 26 scores. 2016 replay, Dublin 115, Mayo 114. 31 scores. There was more scores, in fact, in 2016 with less kicking. But what I'm saying is, now coaches, they've been more careful of the kick pass. And the softer, the one, the instep has been used a lot more. Now, the instep of the bit, it's a more sure pass than the, the, the through the laces when you're under pressure or the one from the outside of the bit. Yes, coaches, and we don't get it, and I don't want you to be misquoting me here. Yes, you practice the outside of the bit. Yes, you practice through the lace, but you, but you also put plenty of practice into the instep. Because if you think about it, see, when teams get to the middle of the field now, and that wee dink, just beyond midfield, and that wee dink in behind the, uh, the blanket that's sitting maybe on the 45 into, a, into that wee space, a lot of us a lot shorter kick passes. Coaches, that's what I'm saying. I'm not saying I'm gospel, but I'm, all I'm saying is the longer kick pass. Yes, if you see man in space, you give it. Yes, if you're for to do that, uh, very good at that outside the boot. Yes, execute it. But as I see in that slide there, there's 14 in 2016 and only six were successful. Now, I don't think a manager or a coach would be too happy with that. Uh, so that's what I'm saying is you have to be careful when you're kicking. So um, just to, again, I'm going to move on here, coaches. Um, again, like the hand pass, bad practice, four and nine, four facing four, bad practice. The wee Johnny or Mary or whoever it is in the back, they'll be fed up by the time they get a touch of the ball. Smaller groups. Yes, there's another pet pet hit of mine, coaches. I don't know, you might disagree with me. Uh, short kick passing drills in training. And I, and I wore the t-shirt myself, kicking the ball over 10 meters or 14 meters. Yes, it's okay for working with young ones on the 12s, getting the proper technique, that's no problem. But I've seen it happen in senior training. I've ha seen it happen in minor training kicking balls over 10 and 14 metres and whenever they should be hand passing the ball. And then when they go and do that in a competitive match, we're shouting at them from along the line, why do you not hand pass it? Sure, we're brainwashing them. We're brainwashing them by doing short kicking and thinning. Now, you're going to say, Tony, things are starting to change this year with the new rule. Yes, because when you're outside the 45 now, you can have a wee punt of 20 metres. And if the ball goes 20 metres, you can take your mark. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how much it will be used. It'll be interesting. Uh, but as I say, yes, you'll be practicing maybe kicks over 20 or 25 metres because a player has to run onto the ball. But don't be practicing them then in 10 or 15 metres, unless they say it's you're working on technique. That's all I'm saying. And watch long cues. Don't do long cues. OK, uh, here's a few kick passing drills that we've done down in Abbottstown. Uh, I'm not going to use the word uh, drill, activity. Kick and follow, coaches, just a simple one. Kick and follow. Hold on to get up here. Kick and follow. Now, 
if you watch these players here, <clears throat> this wee group we took them out, we didn't do any spotting correcting coaches. You'll <coughs> you'll understand after watching these drill uh, activities. We didn't do we just let them kick it the way they wanted to. <clears throat> Even when you watch these drills, then step, it is only over 40 meters or 35. And the players that use the instep, it's it's going more direct, more so than through the laces. And you'll see in maybe a couple of more here, lads trying the outside of the bit. We didn't stop them. We just let them kick the ball whatever they want them, the way they want them to do it. Because they say we were using these in our coaching courses, so we could have coaches spotting and fixing to come through the courses. So as I say, you see a couple through the laces and then so that's the first one. Just kick and follow. A nice simple one. Right, we're going to move on to the next one. This one here is kick, follow, take and give. And maybe something I sort of said there, coaches, and maybe you'll be asking me. So I'm going to talk about it in this slide. And I'm getting on well here, 25 past, we're finishing hopefully 10 minutes. Sorry about this. So talk, you're going to ask me, I'm sure somebody will ask me, what's the distance? 20 meters from 20 meters from there to the next, 20 meters from there to there. And then you're working to the 45 yard line. Yes, you can have it longer for hurling. You can have it longer for senior footballers if you want to, but uh, that's a fair distance for them to kick and follow at pace, take the return and give. So great, remember this session is called fitness with, the fitness with the ball through games and game related activities. There's no standing about here. This is flat out intensity given and, and taken. So just watch again, coaches, if I get my hang, hang on this here. Uh, I'm surprising myself with this technology. Here we go. Kick, follow at pace. These lads were knackered at this stage. They were down in Abbotstown all day and we'd done three or four different themes with them. So we supposed to be taking the return there at pace and give it the next person. Just again, the last one we done, it was kick and follow. They didn't take the return. Now they're taking the return and giving it on. So we'll just move on to the next one, coaches. Uh, this one here is diagonal and straight kicking. So the, the corners, the two the four corners there kicking diagonally, and the two the two um, the two grips in the middle are still kicking straight. And they're following, they're, they're still following. Just so just watch, coaches. Some some diagonal kick. Watch. Again, look at the lads is using the outside a little bit. Yes, they're looking a little bit more distance, but the instep and putting into space. There's, there's an old saying, and I never forget it. Hit the space, not the face. Yes, you're going to say, Tony, that might change this year with the mark inside. But hit the space, not the face. Some of these lads were were, were hitting the face. And when you were hitting the face, I know, as I, I used to play defence myself, I liked the ball coming into a forward to his face or to his head or above his head. Because... If I was worth my salt at all, I should be fit to get a hand in or whatever the case would be. Uh, but a ball being kicked into space, you know, a cornerback or a fullback has to anticipate that and be away before the, the forward. It's very hard to get that. So hitting the space, not the face, is, is an old coaching one that I like. But as I say, things might change uh, when you're kicking into the, inside the 45. So do you see that, coaches? Just kick and follow. Just one, there was a couple of lads got confused there. So you kick, you follow at pace, take the return. The man who gives the ball back to you sp sprints on through to the far end again, and so on. Now, I want to say something here. We see, hold on, can I pull this back here? Uh, right, I just want to stop it. I, as I said to you, it's 20 meters again, same thing. Um, you don't want the two grips in the middle to be kicked straight and, uh, kicking straight for all the 10 minutes or whatever, five minutes you're doing this. So you change them up. For example, all you have to do there, coach, is just a wee tip, but I'm sure you know it already. Um, one goes to two, two goes to three, and three goes over to one. And see in this side, three goes to two, two goes to one, and one goes over to the far side. All of a sudden, they'll be kicking to different players. You're mixing up the groups. And then you can do it for the last call. You can have three different calls there and three different groups working. So that's how you change up the groups. Just a wee simple tip. I'm sure you all know it anyway. But So, um, all right, well, I think you all understand that. And we'll move it on here. Next one. Kick, receive, and support from behind. Now, I like this one. I like them all, but I like this one. A wee bit more, again, 
I'm going to stop it here. You're taking the ball. See the mark. See this fella here. From here to this group that's behind. And that's in every corner. That should be ten, at least 10 steps. That looks like maybe only five. So it should be 10 steps. So write this down if you want to. I'm only giving you my opinion. Likewise here, in every corner, the front cone, the back cone should be 10 uh, steps behind. Because it gets the player to read the game. He'll have to be away about a second or two before the man and then say cone receives it to take it at the shoulder at pace. It's more like match pace. No, So it gets him to tune in till timing is wrong and being be there at the right time. So I'm play, just playing the game here. That was a poor kick pass there. But we just let them play it through it. See the man coming from behind? So you kick. You just follow on. You run on through. But it's a man that's coming from behind takes the ball. So after you kick, you run on through. So you follow your pass, for example. Whenever you give it from the front cone to the back cone, you go to the back cone. So you just remember just to follow your pass coaches. That's all you have to do. If you're passing a wee hand pass, you just go back to the back cone and so on. So follow your kick pass. Follow your hand past the next cone. Very simple. Okay, this is the last one, I think. Um, three player move and follow at speed. Again, uh, let's see it play here. Just, uh, just let it play a wee second. Three player move and then kick. Brilliant one. Fitness. How's your kicking when you're when you're getting tired? Again, you can work with two groups facing two groups. Two groups facing one group can be very, very, very intense. Maybe a wee short period in season, no problem. Absolutely no problem doing two, but don't do it for long periods. Two groups facing one, but two facing two, we get a wee bit more of a rest. Um, okay, I just want to before I finish. I just want to explain that one. Okay, just to start that Latin off, I just we done it from end lane or from side lane to side lane. For hurling, you might do it up and down the field and do a wee bit longer for stick work, whatever. Um, Komogi can be maybe that on the 14. Footballers can be maybe slightly short or not, but not much. Let me tell you, not much. Get them to kick the ball, and it's as I say, have grips. Make sure they're not. Have groups today and then away. And uh, what else can I say? Ah, you'll be asking what distance? Ten steps. Ten steps between this man and this man in the middle, and then another ten steps. And then when the when when the balls kick, the balls kick the middle man. If it's kicked astray and one of the side men take it ground, that's one hundred percent. But you're aiming for the middle man, and the middle man can go either left or right. But it still has to be a three man move, and the third player gets the ball and he kicks it off. So just one last look. Third. Just watch, should be going to the middle man, good gather up here, done rail, watch, quick hands, give and kick. Three men coming out, tick, lovely touch, and tick. And as I say, when you're, when you're coming out, you're closing in, you're moving in closer. Even though they start off wide 10 meters or 10 steps apart, you're sort of moving in a bit closer to the middle man to receive that ball from both sides, left and right. Hopefully you understand that, coaches. Great. Ah, brilliant. Brilliant. Uh, sorry. Uh, questions, questions. Uh, Paul, can you come on? Can you come on there, Paul? Sorry, it's twenty-five yeah, to nine. With no 10. problem. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Tony. That was brilliant. I'm sure the participants have plenty of ideas now, and I'm mad keen to get in the pitch when things settle down in your future. So, a few questions here. Uh, we'll run through them here now, and we can see how you can keep them brief and get them maybe done in the next five or ten minutes. Sure. Yep, uh, honest, uh, yes. No problem. So, what's the best way to add intensity into your drills? Uh, the best way, coaches, uh, uh, was what I said there. Uh, the less numbers you have in your drills, uh, sorry, don't like that word, in your activities, the less uh, numbers you have, the less groups you have, and some of them activities that I was doing there, if you have less groups, if you have two groups facing one, brilliant, absolutely. But you'll know yourself, you'll know yourself for very young players, Two groups facing two, maybe even three groups facing two, whatever, for some of them. So you'll know yourself, but the less numbers you have game, in game situations. Uh, yes, when you're playing a full game, sometimes it's very hard to get up the intensity. But I'm going to say to you, coaches, if you're among them, if you're keeping them going, if you're enthusiastic, 
if you're delivering a message, if you if they see that it means a lot to you, they'll respond even in a full game. But small city games can bring up intensity too. Small city games, uh, absolutely great for intensity. Uh, but as I say, activities two drills, activities sorry, for, and you can bring it up on activities two. So the smaller the numbers you use, the more intensity it'll be. Uh, okay, I think okay. I answered that. Head on, hundred percent. Uh, would you coach fitness separate or incorporate fitness on the drills or activities, as you say? Uh, mainly, mainly into mainly into games and activities. Okay. Um, uh, mainly, uh, I'll expand a wee bit on that. Yes, coaches, you're going to say with senior groups and minors and whatever. Yes, there's a time and a place, and maybe as I say, even on the 16, it's a time and place you'll, that you do. And you no, know, there's no harm. Uh, no, even no, not at on the twelfth. You would just it'll be all it'll be all we uh, activities and games for on the twelfth. But fourteen, sixteen, there is a time for an all we session. I know with maybe a part of a session without the ball, a wee bit of a wee bit of running. You have to uh, test their character too. You have to test their character. Maybe not at, as I said, you're not at a young age, but sixteen into minor. Uh, lads are going on to senior, so um, their fitness can be built up without the ball a wee bit too, but mainly, mainly coaches absolutely with the ball through games and activities. Okay, in your sessions, Tony, would you have the games coming first or the drills? <laughs> that's, a, that's a great question. Uh, I'm going to tell you the story, coaches, if you're still with me here. Uh, no, there's still plenty there, Tony. There's right, still plenty here. Br brilliant. Um, uh, I'm not going to name the player. Uh, a player who I who I played with and, and believe it or not, won the Ireland with. Yeah, I was talking about uh, uh, maybe a couple. Of, it's 18 months ago now, anyway, and he's doing wild work in his own club, and he's working with the under 12s and 10s and maybe even 14s, but the 10s and and he and he has them out every Saturday morning. And he was saying, Tony, God, he was asking, he was saying, what way could you get them? And I says, God, I, God, I don't know. And he says, No, this. I tried a thing, and you know this, it definitely worked for me. Um, he told them one Saturday morning, again, if the game, if session was at 10, it was over at quarter past, I was, uh, they wouldn't be arriving to maybe 10 past or quarter past 10. He says, I was wasting 45 minutes of a session because of lads turning up late. He says, I told them one Saturday morning, he says, boys, if we're here in time next Saturday morning, we'll start off the game. He said, Tony, they're at half nine. So what I'm saying is, uh, you know, can be done at senior level too. I'm not saying the seniors will be late, but game, game, surely. Why not start off the game? And whatever's maybe going wrong in a game, you can bring an into activity to try to fix and finish off the game. That's, yes, a lot of the time it's activities forced and then into the games, whatever, small sided fall. But as I said to you, there's a wee tip for you at, on the, at very young age level. If you're bothered getting them out, or even if you haven't, why not start your session with the games? And, and and do your activities if you need to in the middle and finish the game. Okay, great. Okay, are there any statistics available on the percentage rate of late developers in our game? And at what age would you expect to see this late development showing signs of progressing? Oh God, save us. That is that that is a, a good question. Um, well, I don't know. I never, I know. I never played county minor. I played county minor hurling, believe it or not. But I never, and I, I didn't even get a trial for the for the minor footballers. And I think, uh, if I had knew that, I'd have looked. I could have looked that up because I seen I seen something come down uh, come through recently there of a team that never played county minor. I think I've got main right on that team was believe it or not. I don't know how I got on it, but I was. Uh, I was honoured the the, the the select. I was selected at full back on it. So um, they had, as far as a man, Lee Keegan, Brian Fenton, uh, Connor McManus, uh, Ber Bernard Brogan, and um, Kevin McManaman uh, of, of lads that's playing nowadays. And it might be more, but there was all all the lads who's retired, but they're all all Ireland winners, they're all all stars. Lads who never played uh, never played county minor, and that's the type of names that never played county minor. So where where was the cutoff point? I would say for I got on the the dairy team in the last year on twenty one, but I would still say twenty two, twenty three for county level. C for club level. 
I don't believe there's a cutoff point. I believe some players, and as I say, I you know see, I see you know we see it around Derry and and, and around this part. I can see players who are real good players and they decide to take a break and they say the night lights for them, the high stools and whatever, the break lights I call them. And then they come back to it and later on in life, maybe in 24 and 25, and they're playing, they're playing absolutely brilliant for the club. That wouldn't work at, club, at county level. But as I say, county level, 22, 23, club level, never, no break up point. Because as I say, a lad's attitude can change. And when you when an attitude can change, wonderful things can happen. That's great, Tony. Just to finish off with two two questions. Uh, second last one. How many games would you use in your coaching session? How many games would I use in the coaching session? Yeah. Well, I might have said that. Well, maybe I didn't answer that earlier. Uh, what I would just, what I'd say is, uh, I'm I'm big in games. Maybe as I'll say with a senior team, maybe in pre-season there'll be a there'll be a time and a place pre-season that there'll be there'll be no games. There'll be hard running with the ball. There'll be maybe a bit of hard running without the ball. Now, I'm talking with seniors here. Absolutely, there's no point me trying to uh, have a wee white fab here. There'll be run, but, but it doesn't go on for a prolonged period, maybe for four or five weeks, whatever. And then we're into, we're into all ball uh, games, intense games, uh, intense activities. And uh, so games for most, most of the season, I'd be playing some type of games, conditioned, small sided, or full games in training. Uh, it's hard to bit playing full games. It's hard to bit um, eighteen players if you have thirty three players. It's hard to bit eighteen players if you're playing against fifteen, because nowadays you have to encounter a lot of bodies behind the forty five or at the forty five. So getting a team to play against eighteen players, three X in defence, that's great. That's great condition for the team. So there's no harm lap side numbers nights. Uh, Brilliant. No, games would be uh, a big of my coaching session. Okay, Tony, last question is a very topical one. What games are the best to use if you're going to play against the blanket defence? Sorry, sorry, I didn't pick up. What, what games what? are the best to use if you're going to play against the blanket defence? Uh, see that game I showed you tonight? Uh, who's it, uh, was it the second game? Who's attacking defending? Uh, great game to get used to. Uh, uh, playing bodies behind the ball because in that game, well, you're playing until 65 or halfway line, everybody's still behind the ball, that was all the opposition behind the ball. So if you have 30 players some night at training, you can play that 15 against 15 and you're going to have to encounter, get past 14 or 15 players before you get a score. So a game like that there, um, again, what I said earlier there, playing the lap sided in full games in Thunan, uh, 18 against 15. If you don't have 28 players, then uh, 18 against 15, 33, sorry. If you're playing, uh, you've only 20 players or 24 players, you can play uh, 13 against uh, 11, whatever the case may be. Just oh, add a few extra and get them used to playing uh, against extra numbers in defence. Absolutely. Uh, and the more games you play like that, like that in Thunan, uh, they'll come on and they'll They'll know better uh, to how to get round that um, round the defence. I would say also a lot of them we draw, activities I use tonight, quick hands and all, and uh, there's other wee stuff we could use, and maybe we'll do, do it later. Week. Uh, that all quick hands coming off the shoulder. It's brilliant to get round defences. Okay, that's brilliant, Tony. Uh, can we, do you want to talk about what's happening next week? Yes, uh, just uh, uh, hopefully I don't realise you are still, you know what I mean, uh, uh, hopefully this has worked for you tonight coaches, number one, hopefully the videos worked for you. I, this is the first time I have done a webinar, it wouldn't, uh, it wouldn't be near Paul or my, my fault and I'm not being, I'm not trying to uh, get out of it if it didn't work because uh, it is working for me fine, it's working for Paul and his house, so it's all about internet, how strong your internet is, but please God, the videos worked. If they did work, then I intend to go in two weeks' time again with another session uh, similar to this year. Uh, we'll get the information out. But next week, uh, can I say to you, coaches, uh, next Wednesday, the 3rd of June at 7.30, uh, I'm telling you now, it'll be worthwhile to tune in. It's a question and answer. I'm putting questions to Connor Laverty of Kilcoo and Down. Uh, great, great man. Uh, a great, great man. I had a, phoned him the other day, maybe two or three weeks ago, for five minutes, to, I thought it'd be for five minutes, and an hour and a half later, I'm still talking to him. Um, he's been working. I shouldn't be. He's working the club since he was 17 years of age. Now he's 
maybe he's, he's 35 now and he's been taking on these teams. He is, he's worked down in Trinity College in Dublin his last nine years. He's coached for the Monon senior football team. Uh, he's still playing for Kilku. Uh, and I'll tell you, I think there's a wee Facebook, uh, uh, YouTube uh, clip going up there of, of block and drill of him doing the block of five on the eights. But the work he's done in that uh, club, and I'll tell you something, if you have a spare hour next Wednesday evening, it'd be worthwhile tuning into that. And you'll get the opportunity to ask Conor Lavery questions, uh, as well as maybe a few questions to start. But there'll be definitely, I'll not be asking too many. I'll give you the opportunity. So please, God, you can tune in next Wednesday evening, because I know uh, uh, you'll take a lot out of it, because I know I will I have already taken a lot from him. That's brilliant, Tony. Thanks very much for that. Thanks very much for the presentation. You can see from the comment box, a lot of people really enjoyed your session. So hopefully again, they tune in next week. Uh, just a reminder, this presentation will be available on the Ulster GA YouTube channel over the next few days. And as Tony mentioned, we'll be hosting another webinar next Wednesday evening with Conor Laverty. And I'll be inviting everyone who registered tonight to attend. So you'll receive an email to register over the next few days. So thanks, Tony, and everyone who joined us. And I hope to see you again next Wednesday evening. And good night. Thank you. Thank you, coaches. Thank you.